Hey guys, welcome, welcome to, to Laura and Emily's chemistry, chemistry class. We'll, we'll be your scientists today. Today we're going to learn about chemical bonding, also how electrons behave when sharing among other electrons. The bonds we'll be talking about are ionic, metallic, and covalent. I'll start by explaining ionic bonds. Okay, an ionic bond is a chemical bond in which one or more electrons from one atom are removed and attached to another atom, ending in a positive or negative ion which attract to each other. First, we're going to explain the behavior of electrons in an ionic bond. The electrons in an ionic bond are either lost or gained. Cations, which are always metals and have positive charges, lose electrons. First, we're going to explain the behavior of electrons in an ionic bond. The electrons in this bond are either lost or gained. Cations, which are always metals and have positive charges, lose electrons. For example, potassium. Okay. I don't know so, what we do here. So, we, um, what's outlined, this whole thing, um, these are what you call metal elements, um, and they go from atomic number number three to um, 103, excluding these ones. Um, there are different types of elements, and these over here, they're non-metals, and so is hydrogen. So, um, and potassium is K and is atomic number. 19, oops, and it's right there. Potassium is a cation, and it's going to lose electrons because um, the charge is always positive. So, no! An electron. And the way you would name it is just um, the potassium ion. Because you, you add ions two cations and you add the word ion when it's a cation right so you put the element name and then just put ion at the end the but potassium you guys ion go, we'll go over that later <clears throat> um <clears throat> okay so anions which are non-metals and have a negative charge, gain electrons. Um, for example, nitrogen. Nitrogen. Okay, so Good nitrogen point. is right here. It's um, number seven. I'll circle it. You guys probably won't see it. But it's right there, nitrogen. And it's a non-metal. So, and the, um, the symbol is just N, and it's a non-metal, and it would have five valence electrons, so. Okay, so nitrogen has five um, valence electrons, and since it's an anion, which is always a non-metal and always negative, always a negative charge, um, it will gain three electrons to form a full octet, and um, the octet is when there are eight valence electrons. So there's a full outer shell. Okay. So now it has a full octet. And the way you would name this is um, nitride. You just put IDE after the element. A covalent bond is a chemical bond formed by the sharing of one or more electrons, especially pairs of electrons between atoms. So I'll talk about nonpolar. Um, and this is even sharing. So it's a bond between two nonmetal atoms that have the same electronegativity 
and therefore they have equal sharing of bonding between the electron pair. So um, this occurs because they almost have the same exact electronegativity, so they can't share anymore because it's already like, split evenly. So an example would be that if Emily had two and a half cookies, and I had two and a half cookie, um, it would be even because I can't give her more because then she would have more than I do and she can't give me one because we have the same. So that's nonpolar. And then polar is, um, so an example with actual element would be um, if you have that um, C, carbon, and sulfur, they have almost the same exact um, electronegativity, and their electronegativity is 2.5, so if you do 2.5 minus 2.5 is 0. And for the polar um, covalent bond, it's when a bond occurs between two nonmetal atoms that have different electronegativities and therefore have unequal sharing of bonding electron pairs. So um, when we compare hydrogen and oxygen, um, they cannot completely remove an electron from hydrogen cannot completely remove an electron from oxygen. So um, so it would be as if Emily had two cookies again. She had this. And I had two cookies, right? And then I took her half cookie because I'm stronger and older than her. So I would get more. That would be unequal because I'm taking her half, even though we could have split it, but I just decided to take her whole half. So um, for the hydrogen and oxygen example, um, hydrogen has the electronegativity of 3.5, and oxygen has the electronegativity of 2.1. When you subtract those from each other, you get 1.4, and it's not even. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so now I'll just talk about some um, properties between covalent and ionic bonds. So you know it's a covalent bond when it's not water soluble, um, when the it's in the liquid form and it doesn't have any electrical conductivity, um, when it doesn't have a good melting point. It takes forever to melt or you need to put it at like really high temperatures in order for me to melt. You know, it's a covalent bond. If it's an ionic bond, you um, when you um, have it soluble in water, you know that it's an ionic bond. When <clears throat> it's really good with electrical conductivity in its liquid form, um, you know it's ionic. And when it's 800 degrees Celsius and it melts, um, you know it's an ionic bond. Um, the electrons in a metallic bond, which is the bonding of metal and metal, flow in a sea of electrons, which is where the electrons are free, mobile, and unassociated with any like particular atom. Okay. Meanwhile, I'll be eating a cookie. Okay. You guys like chem? Because we do. It's our favorite class. Shout out to Miss Delaney. And period four. Coming through. Okay. So. This is what it looks like. These are metallic cations, and these are the electrons, and they just kind of float.
around each other. 